The Amazon Fire TV Stick, probably the best thing to happen to this country. Amazon used to be just an online bookstore, but the only thing that Amazon then had in common with Amazon now is that it was mostly responsible for putting bookstores like Barnes & Noble out of business. Nowadays, it seems like Amazon is everywhere, making money hand over fist and continuing to put businesses out of business across multiple industries. Don't ask me about my business. No! So let's take a look at the top 10 ways that Amazon is taking over both the world and your life. Movies and television. While Netflix was the first company to make it big in the streaming realm, Amazon quickly followed them. And where Netflix was winning in terms of quantity, it appeared that Amazon has a few wins in terms of quality, as it was the first non-traditional Hollywood studio to have a film with Academy Award nomination for Best Picture, thanks to its distribution of Manchester by the Sea back in 2016. Thank God we're back in Hollywood. Amazon's video streaming platform, which was recently rebranded as Prime Video, a product that was smartly bundled with the Prime package that only costs consumers 99 bucks for the whole year, is yet another way that Amazon's able to bundle services or lower prices in one area to basically make it impossible for its competition to hold out in other areas. While Netflix is still the market leader, its lead has been shrinking as more people cut cords and move away from traditional sources of media like cable and satellite. You mean illegal cable? Amazon has made some huge partnerships in the realm of sports television as well, landing exclusive rights to broadcast Thursday Night Football before the 2017 NFL season, meaning that Amazon is slowly but surely taking over every aspect of the visual at-home entertainment industry. Liking this video so far? Then hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Video Games Amazon has dabbled in video games for a decade, as it acquired the game developer Reflexive Entertainment in October of 2008. But it wasn't until 2012 that Amazon announced Amazon Game Studios, an actual wing to its company that would be dedicated fully to developing and releasing games. You know what? This video game has really taught me that I need to have a better relationship with my son. <laughs> they moved from that back to acquiring game developers, picking up Double Helix games in February 2014 as part of their, quote, ongoing commitment to build innovative games for customers. The biggest move that they've made, though, is the nearly billion dollar purchase of game streaming giant Twitch, the industry leader that allows gamers to share the live or recorded sessions of them playing particular games with their followers. Adding Twitch helped Amazon reach a much younger demographic than their other acquisitions have. And of course people send me Twitch booby streamers. And like all of its moves, boiled down to adding more people to its Prime membership program and to promote other Amazon related businesses. Amazon and drones. Referred to by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos himself not as drones but as being part of Prime Air and called aerial vehicles, the engineers at Amazon were already on their sixth or seventh generation of drones by April of last year. What that means is today I can finally review the new drone. Those drones may sound futuristic and maybe a little bit silly, but they should absolutely terrify you, at least if you work for companies like Walmart and Target, as they've been described as being able to knock down the final barrier keeping Amazon from completely dominating the retail marketplace. Amazon has decimated the retail marketplace by offering the same products for much cheaper, but because they don't have any kind of brick and mortar stores, they'll never be able to capture 100% of that market, as some people want to get their products on the same day. So the purpose of the drones would be to deliver products from thousands of Amazon distribution centers to people every single day. There's also the idea of sending AI-powered delivery trucks to people's homes, which makes more sense, as you'd think that people will be looking to order more than whatever could dangle from a drone. Series of uh, a convoy of self-driving trucks drove across Europe. The Kindle. While the Kindle may seem like old news, it's actually the perfect example of what a world run by Amazon would look like. And uh, another great benefit too is that Kindle books are cheaper than paperback books. It's basically a product made by Amazon to look at information dictated by Amazon and to buy products made and distributed by Amazon. It obviously has general internet access as well, and its built-in programs make it a portal into Amazon's multiple markets. The Kindle is the perfect example of how Amazon double dips into information technology. While Amazon has yet to offer a smartphone, it's reported that that's something that they're close to. And once that happens, you'll have the Kindle to thank. Your children, why do you all need cell phones? Nothing that Amazon does happens by chance, and this is a perfect example of that. Amazon and information. The only thing that the Kindle can't control is that access to the internet. While a lot of online information comes from history books, day-to-day -day information comes from newspapers, and that's something that Amazon can't control, right? Well, not so much. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos actually purchased one of the most respected newspapers in the world, the Washington Post, recently for $250 million. A 
pittance for Bezos, the richest man in the world. We hold the world ransom for one million dollars. Consolidating information like this under the Amazon umbrella is a bit more doomsday-ish than is probably fair, and is something that Bezos and the editors of the Post wanted to make sure was pointed out, as they've made a pretty big deal out of observing that the purchase was done thanks to a private investment from Bezos, as opposed to it being purchased by Amazon itself, or as a wing to Amazon's burgeoning multi-industry monopoly. And uh, you must be the monopoly guy. There's also the fact that at least right now, Amazon doesn't need to dictate the news in its favor, but that may not always be the case. And considering that the Washington Post is the newspaper that all those politicians in DC read, you'd have to think that there's at least some correlation there. Amazon Web Services. Outside of controlling the news, there's another way to control information, and that's by controlling the internet itself. Sound impossible? Well, it is and it isn't. Well, this is not mission difficult, Mr. Hunt, it's mission impossible. When most people think of the internet, they think of millions of interconnected devices around the world. But the reality is that the majority of websites are stored on servers that are owned by a smallish handful of companies. Larger websites have their own servers, obviously, but most hire third-party companies to host their sites, as opposed to buying and maintaining their own servers. And one of the main companies that sell server space is, you guessed it, Amazon. Amazon is actually considered the leader in cloud-based services, and is so large that it actually controls five times the information of its next 14 competitors combined. So that whole bit about the Kindle controlling information? Yeah, it's starting to get really Skynet-y in here. Because of that, it works very closely with the government, namely the CIA. While that should raise red flags on its own, you also have to wonder what Amazon is doing with all of that data. Wow. You really are CIA. And maybe one company shouldn't really be capable of turning off the internet either. Not just for moral or ethical reasons, because of what would happen to like the world economy or people's healthcare or any other of, you know, every business that exists. Amazon and donations. As nefarious as controlling the infrastructure of the internet may be, you can't deny Amazon works to make a lot of stuff simpler and more efficient. The best example of that is how it helps regular people facilitate their donations, whether it be to charities or their choice of politicians. The first major example of that was back in 2004, when they created, quote, channels to help people donate between five and $200 to whichever politician they backed in the 2004 presidential campaign between then President George W. Bush and Democratic hopeful Senator John Kerry. Hello? Despite the fact that the program was in its infancy then, it still managed to raise over $300,000 between the candidates. Beyond that, Amazon has also used this program to raise money for the Red Cross after natural disasters like Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Katrina, and the tsunami in the Indian Ocean that decimated Indonesia. The company also initiated the Smile program in 2013, which allowed people to do their regular shopping through the Smile program by adding Smile Dot to the beginning of their URL, which donated a half a percent of their purchase amount to whichever charities people selected. That's just the beginning of what could become a major donation resource for charities and politicians, something that hasn't been lost on critics of Amazon, who already dislike the amount of money that Amazon donates to political candidates and lobbyists. With the Supreme Court decision of Citizens United that found that money is a form of free speech, corporations have basically been able to donate as much as they see fit anyway. Where's my money, man? Where's my money? What makes this different is that Amazon could, in theory, also dictate the millions of dollars in money that's donated from private individuals to those running for Congress or the presidency, which would make them even more powerful than they already are. Amazon's second headquarters. The biggest news surrounding Amazon lately has stemmed from all the incentives that different cities and states have been throwing the company's way in the hopes that they'll be chosen as the location of their new second headquarters. Because of all the assumed benefits that the location would get by Amazon opening a second headquarters of around 50,000 initial employees, it's thought that any benefits offered would be offset. But it does set a pretty bad precedent for a city or state to offer a business what some of these places have offered in terms of long-term tax holidays, especially when you take into account that any actual benefit of something like that to a major city has been found to be negligible at best over the long term, even if nothing is offered. Cities and states have wanted Amazon to choose them so badly that they've done some crazy stuff. New York City turned the lights on the Empire State Building, Amazon Bright Orange. New York, New York. Tucson brought a 21-foot-tall cactus to Amazon's main HQ in Seattle. The mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, wrote a thousand reviews about Amazon products, giving them all five stars. Ottawa asked its citizens to cheer for Amazon during the intermission of a hockey game between the Canucks and Senators. And Birmingham set up three gigantic Amazon boxes around town with giant replica dash buttons and even sent flirty tweets to the company. Beyond those attempts at PR, they all offered basically negative taxes and that Amazon wouldn't have to pay any taxes for a range of years. What if, just temporarily, mind you, we put this year's taxes on our credit card? and the city would pay all sorts of incentives to them, meaning that the cities or states would lose money on the deal up front. Amazon and food. 
After the purchase of Whole Foods, which was actually known as one of the more expensive grocery stores in the world, Amazon came in and immediately slashed prices for customers. Um, thank you. Bloody delicious. Because they're so profitable in other areas of their business, they can literally run their entire grocery arm of their business at a loss for years and years and years, simply waiting out their competition until they go out of business, at which time they'll probably jack prices right back up with a much higher market share than they would have had otherwise. While it sounds pretty devilish, it's the way that a lot of businesses operate, with combo stores like Target doing the exact same thing for years. Shoot the Target. The only difference is that Amazon is doing it on such a large scale and across multiple industries simultaneously, meaning that in a decade or two, everything could be sold by Amazon, which is not a good thing because competition is what keeps costs low and innovation high. Of course, people also feared that Walmart could end up taking over the world at some point too. So maybe all this fear is a little overblown. Amazon reshapes entire industries. It should be said that Amazon has been obviously powerful enough to get entire cities or states to change their names or is able to basically take the internet offline. So it shouldn't be a surprise that they've been able to completely take over and change industries at or to their will. The first example of that is the book industry. And while that gave them the blueprint they've needed to enter other retail industries, it's not all bad. One of the better things that have come from Amazon's amazing rise to power, beyond all the millionaires they created from their stock, is the fact that more people than ever before in the history of the world are capable of publishing their own books. But I live like a millionaire. Publishing a blog or website is one thing, but actually being able to publish a book or ebook was still something that up until Amazon required the help of a publisher. That's really not the case anymore, as people are able to individually publish their own books either in terms of an ebook or by pulling a few strings, an actual physical book. That's just a small example of what Amazon has done. And while there is the fear that they'll create the biggest monopoly in the history of the world, it's also true that innovation is necessary. And by shaking up a lot of these other industries, if nothing else, Else, Amazon has put the fear of God in some of those previously untouchable companies like Walmart. I'm God. Bingo! Which has forced them to respond by switching up how they do things as well. That has meant, for now, lower prices for consumers, which is always a good thing, right? So it's hard to root against Amazon, unless that is, of course, you used to be Barnes & Noble or ended up crashing into one of those gigantic boxes in Birmingham, Alabama. Help us go prime by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. And don't go anywhere, check out some of our other videos.